And now, a word from our sponsors. This episode is sponsored by Samaj Music Group, a Louisiana-based independent record label, bringing to you all original music with that Louisiana sound. Their genre includes rap, R&B, hip-hop, funk, and pop. To get a feel for their sound and featured artists added to your playlist, be sure to go follow them on Instagram at Samaj Music Group and Facebook for updates and up-and-coming projects today. Samaj Music Group. Strategic People, a Louisiana-based music production team specializing in audio, visuals, and media. This group is also well diverse and can get to work on your next up-and-coming album project. Be sure to check out strategicpeoples.com today and follow them on Instagram and Facebook at Strategic People. For anything music, think Strategic People. You're listening to One Sound, One Theme Podcast, a Strategic People's production where we highlight and promote entrepreneurs, startup businesses, independent music, and creators while offering information and inspiration on topics everyone can relate to. Thanks for tuning in to We Found One Scene Podcast, representing the 337, the flatlands of Lafayette, Louisiana. It's your girl, Slane Marie. And your girl, Daisha Nicole. Be sure to go to our website at onesoundonescene.buzzsprout.com on your mobile or web device. Hit the subscribe button in the top right-hand corner of the screen to get updates on new episodes. You can also subscribe on YouTube at One Sound One Scene. Be sure to hit the bell for notifications for up-and-coming shows and to catch up on past episodes. How you doing today, Chicky? <laughs> I'm doing good, Chicky. Chicky number two. <laughs> We have a special guest joining us today. I like to call him one of 337 Pioneers. He made us feel good taking pictures, and he made us big, fine country girls feel good about ourselves. Welcome to the show, Mr. Kevin Caesar, mostly known as Big Boom. How are you today? I'm fine. How are y'all doing? We are amazing. Thanks so much for joining the show today. Yeah. Well, thanks for, for having me. So today, we're talking about why is it a struggle for our 337 artists to make it? And what can we do to fix that? But before we get into all of that, I want you to tell our listeners where you're from and who is Big Boot. And how did you get the name? Okay. Well, I was raised partially in Eunice, Louisiana, so I claim Eunice. That's where my bloodline's from, but I was born in Los Angeles and uh, ended up moving down here. Um, the name Big Boom comes from um, one of the first words that I ever said. <laughs> my, brothers, my brothers used to watch Batman. And uh, I don't know if you're familiar with the old Batman, you know, like in the 70s and 80s, but when um, he would hit somebody, they would do like, it would be like a bang or a pow and boom. Yeah. And the only one, and the only ones that I knew was boom. Every time I would see that one, I would say boom. <laughs> so, it t- you know, just kind of stuck like that. So who first, who started calling you that first? Your brothers or, or mom? My mom. Okay, so... When you started rapping, that's what you say. You know what? I'm going to go ahead on it. I'm going to use Big Boom. Or it yeah, was a nickname. Um, was it just a nickname? It was a nickname. But it kind of um, took a few different... It morphed into a few things. They would call me Boom Badoom. And then it, uh, <laughs> don't laugh too hard at it. <laughs> but, you know, and then uh, Boom Boom. And it just kind of stuck. Big Boom. They used to call me Big Boom just in in the hood growing up. Kind of teasing me with the big, you know, Big Boom. Right, right. Big Boom. And uh, so when I started rapping, my first rap name was High C. Because my last name is Caesar. But then a rapper from California came out with the name. So it was just Boom. And that just been my my nickname, my rap name, tag name, street name, all that. Just the same name. My mom even called me Boom. She don't even call me Kevin. (laughs) Wow. Boom was inevitable. You know, you couldn't run away from <laughs> yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. At what age did you start loving music? Oh, man, as long as I could remember. I mean, I can't even 
not one thought in my life where music wasn't present. That's, you know, it's kind of strange, but. No, I we can relate. <laughs> I can't even think of a time where I, like, just discovered music. I mean, I, I was still in, as a kid, I would hear records they would play at uh, family functions. I was still in them records, putting them in the car. Yeah. You know, I had to, I had to have that record. And um, I used to DJ at my mom's parties. They'd have their get-togethers in there to tell me what records to put on. I know y'all are a little younger than me, but I remember back in the days, you used to be able to stack the songs on the top of the um, the stem or whatever that you would put the, the record on. Mm-hmm. You'd be able to put like four or five records up at a time, and when one record would finish playing, one record would drop down. Like the music would raise up and move out of the way, and another record would drop down. Yeah. So they would they would line up the records and as like five or six years old I was DJing at family functions, you know. So music always been around for me. Go ahead. Wow. Always. So what inspired you to pick up the pen and start rapping? Um the first rap I ever heard kind of just caught my attention. Um one of my partners from well my brother's partners from the neighborhood was in the Navy and he came back with a record. And, you know, coming up, you know, we had like funk records and disco records and, you know, the music was different, you know, Rick James, Prince, Michael Jackson, whatever, you know, mm-hmm. but there was this one record. Y'all can go research it. Um, it's called the Fatback Band and a song called Money. And when I heard the way that dude was rapping on there, it just kind of blew my mind. I would just play it over and over and over. I never heard nobody just, recite anything like that. And it wasn't the greatest rap, but it was just the way he was projecting his voice and rapping. It resonated time, with you. <laughs> yeah, it just stuck with me. And then uh, I started recognizing what it was. And the first rap I memorized was uh, a band called Lakeside, a song called Fantastic Voyage. Ever heard that? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I memorized that. And oh, then yeah. That wasn't no real official rap record. Cause it was just kind of like... <laughs> Disco records with raps on it, but right, right. Now let me ask you this: Do you remember your first rap ever? Uh huh. You want to spit it for us? <laughs> oh, I don't remember rap. <laughs> Come I don't on. Remember, but no, I don't. I just kind of remember the hook, and it was so corny. Y'all, y'all can't pay me to say that shit. Oh, <laughs> come on now! You one of the pioneers. We need to know. Well, it was it was corny, but it was about. Um, the only reason I wrote it, to be honest with you, um, it was a, a program that the teacher was having, the drama teacher was having, and if we were a part of the program, we get to come out of, out of our class, our regular scheduled class, like the last 30 minutes of the day, mm. they would let us out. So, shoot, I jumped on that. <laughs> I want to be a part of that. Yeah. Because I had, because my last, I remember back then my last class was uh was science, some some science, political science or something like that. And I hated it, so I signed up for that. It was a song called Cigarette Smoker. Oh, now you know we got to hear it. Nah. You ain't got to give us the <laughs> hook. Just give us like maybe man, two that, bars. Man, that was so long ago. I promise <laughs> you, I don't, I don't even remember. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was. It was just so corny, though. I, y'all ain't going to get it out of me. I'm sorry. Aww. Aww. Look, we both it. Wah, wah, wah. I'll take that one. <laughs> Everybody remember they first. Come on now. <laughs> Tell us. Yeah, I, don't, I actually don't remember the um the lyrics. I just remember the hook. And it was so corny, I promise you. But I, I remember the first um rap that I wrote though like my first battle rap that I ever wrote come on share that with us you come gotta on, give, give, us, give, us, give us a little sub sub yeah well <laughs> it was um try to come and get some of this that was that's what it was called I ain't gonna spit it like you know rap but I just say the lyrics most you know as much as I could remember when it would say try to come and get some of this cause I just begun to get my rap intact cause you went you can't get none of this I bet my life on it to be exact I drop sticking the facts if you hate step the fuck back suckers keep sucking you drive a truck keep trucking my rocks are hot like lava if so I spit you gonna be ducking you know something like that hey, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I like that, that I like a, that, <laughs> that was, oh, I, ain't, I was vicious now don't get it twisted yeah. I, was, I was vicious now let me ask you: If you could have done anything differently with your career, what would you have done? Oh Lord, I think about that a lot. 
Um, but wait, before you answer that, hold on. Before you answer that, do you want to share with us a little bit about your career? Um, it's so much you have to probably ask me something specific. You know what I mean? I mean, I could, I can go on for days. Like I, your just, first show, where was your first show? My first like talent show or just show period. Your first show period, like as like, coming as out as big, big boom, like and, and, like, and, and okay, like making so like, money, like, yeah, making money. Okay, making money, making money. Um, well, it go to be honest with you, it go it goes so far back, man. It's like I'm working on a book. To be honest, I'm gonna kind of leak this out. But it's called The Almost Unbelievable Life of Kevin Caesar. Ooh, that's a catchy title and, uh, now. Mm-hmm. And it's, um, because it's so deep, you know what I'm saying? Like, people don't realize, like, we were, like, one of the first, me and another guy, one of my partners, they love him, he's dead now, but we were sought after by Cash Money Records, like, one of the first artists that they tried to record and put down on their record label. Mm-hmm. So it's like, even before then, we were doing independent stuff. Like my eyes was open to it because I would go back home to California and see what they was doing. Like when the NWA thing was out, that was new to the people here. But for us, like our family and, and like a lot of people from Eunice are from Los Angeles. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of people from Eunice moved back and forth from like the fifties and sixties and seventies. So a lot of us would go back. We were hip to what was happening. So I was like more advanced than a lot of like people around here that was dreaming mm-hmm. and and coming from the country you know what i'm saying i'm gonna add to that later but how people just don't believe that it can happen here yeah and and i was one of those people to answer your question what would i do different i tried to defy the odds but it's almost true you know what i'm saying that it almost can't happen here and mm-hmm. i was one of the ones that tried to defy the odds because i seen it happening so when i would come back home for my summer vacations you know i had things on my mind like i wasn't just satisfied with daydreaming and just talking shit about we're gonna do this and do that i actually was doing it took, took action mm-hmm. yeah yeah and you know we created a sound like i started off at like 13 years old doing record hops we call it record hops where we from but like dances so I got with, my brother was a DJ and he used to DJ with this guy named George Fisher. So I talked Mr. Fisher, who happened to be my teacher, into letting me use some DJ equipment to throw a party because I wanted to rap and show everybody that I knew how to rap. So we put the money together and booked the neighborhood center and like 150 people came out to like my first party, you know what I'm saying? Just to hear me rap. Wow. The stuff that I would be doing in my room. So it made it believable that it could happen, you know, and I took it from there. That was like my first time ever getting paid. And that was without the power of social media. <laughs> oh, no, that was <laughs> social media. That was like, that was cassettes. Mm-hmm. It wasn't even CDs back then. It's like the 90s, like early 90s, you know. And um, once I seen that I could command the crowd, I knew that units wasn't big enough. Mm. So, so it was like I needed to get to the next best thing. So, you know, I would hear... Troy D on the radio and they would have concerts and contests. So my first time ever venturing out from Eunice was for uh, a contest that they had last year. The winner opened up for the two live crew of the Cajun Dog. And um, I was young, man, like 12 years old. I had a dolphin. We rented this car and I had, (laughs) and I had, I had him drive me to last year. <clears throat> when I got to Lafayette, I was late. And when I knocked on the door, when we finally found the place, I knocked on the door and the dude was like, the contest is over. Oh. And I was like, I was like, man, I came all the way from Eunice. Y'all gonna hear me rap for the next contest. Because I had that, my son is kind of like that. Dace knows my son kind of has that tenacity. He ain't gonna give up. Mm-hmm. He, get it, he get it from <laughs> me, you know. But it was like, I had to let these people know that I could rap. And it was a um, guy named Don Wilson. I don't know if you know Don Wilson. Don Apollo Wilson. He still do shows. Mm-hmm. A lot of Southern Soul shows. And it was uh, Shorty Stevens. Make a Star Productions and Bobby Kaya. Yeah, it was my first time meeting Bobby. Yeah, and I was, like, Bobby. Man, I, I was like, man, I could rap. And he was like, well, spit something. And I spit something. And it was like, whoa. So he called the group that won and told them, nah, we got to have a runoff. Mm-hmm. So they... 
they re-rigging and put us on KJCB. And uh, we had a battle. It was me against the Fresh T-Boys. Now, the Fresh T-Boys was, uh, I don't know if y'all remember D-Flat from D-South Syndicate that died. Yeah. It was D-Flat, b uh Shook, a few of them. Mm-hmm. And I battled their whole crew. And, uh, you know, last year, that's when I, one of my first experiences about last year, realizing how tribal they was. You know, I'm going to be honest with you, I smoked them, you heard me, I killed them. But they had all their family calling in, you know, even later throw, you know, admitted like, man, our cousin was in that contest against you, but our mamas had us at the pay phone with $20 worth of quarters calling back to back. <laughs> so, you know, it was, uh, it was all love. But that, uh, for man, Bobby Kaye saw me and invited me to uh, just open up that club Strawberries one night. There was a bunch of people there, and I just grabbed a mic. Gave me a couple of hundred dollars, so that kind of like let me taste blood, you know what I'm saying? Once I tasted that blood, it was like I was on a quest to kind of figure out how I was going to get in the game. Mm. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So with everything that you, um, you know, saw in the music business and, you know, things like that, if any of your kids went to follow in your steps, music-wise, would you support them? And what advice would you give them? Well, kind of already had that conversation with one of them. I explained to them that I would never discourage them from doing anything that they believe in because I had to make a lot of people believe with with what I had to do, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And what I try to do. But what I did explain to him was the difference between a dream and a job. Your dream is what you want to do, but your job is what you got to do. So you need, and you need to uh, figure out what you're gonna do as far as for making a living. For, as far as making a living for yourself, figure out what you want to do as far as a job. And with a job, you can finance your dream, but it don't exist. You know, the dream don't exist without the job. Right. And I wish, and I wish I would have listened to my mama when they was telling me that, but. We came up in the crack era, you know what I'm saying? If you'd have told us that we wouldn't be touching a thousand, two thousand dollars a week, we would laugh at you back then. You know, we had a different mentality. We're gonna get it this way, but you know, I wish I would have listened. And I would you know, I would never discourage them. I mean, I would definitely have my hands on it and my input would definitely be be in it because the game is a dirty game. I mean, this music business is 10 times worse than the dope game. They got more respect and regulations and rules in a dope game, in a street game, than they do in this music. Everybody wants to be a star, and they'll do anything to get in that position, and it's so disgusting right now. Mm. I'm just just sick of the game the way it is right now. So I would kind of like try to give them the warning signs and what to look for, what to avoid, what not what to not entertain, you know what I'm saying? Because with me, to go back to what you asked on your two-part question, you know, um, <laughs> what would I do different? I would choose who I would let in my realm mm. and my circle because some people bring certain energies that bring you down. You know, a prophet told me at the height of my shit was like, your charity would be your demise. Mm. And mm. I, I didn't listen and I, I let some people into my world that ain't have no business being around me that, you know, whether they're going to admit it or not, had a lot to do with, you know, me losing grips of what I had, what I worked for a lot, all these years for. Yeah. They kind of, they were slippery. They were, they were, they were the butter and the grease that kind of helped it slip out of my hands. You know what I'm saying? And you got to pick and choose who you let into your world. Cause some people bring a whole lot of misery and baggage, and you know, and my spirit being when you're a creator like that, when you create music, it's coming from your soul. So that portal is open. Yeah. And if you're not, and if you're not careful, you know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, things can get in that. So I would kind of like teach them what not to entertain, who not to entertain. But then again, that's you know part of the story too. You know, some of that. Turmoil makes a good story, you know what I mean? So, right. I'm glad you oh, brought yeah. up about the uh, the bad vibe, and I like to call it the energy suckers, right? Because right. they come there for 
couple different reasons. Like you said, the demise of you, you know, just to put doubt, maybe fear into your mindset so you're not as great as you know you can be. And um, a lot of people in general, whether you're entrepreneur or artist or what have you, they circle themselves around people who are energy suckers. And um, that is key to any type of success. Know your circle and keep your circle small. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yes. Definitely. Definitely. But I I was always one. And I mean, I take it with a grain of salt. It's bittersweet, but it's still my purpose because who I am is who I am. You know what I mean? And at the end of the day, I know what my intentions were, you know what I'm saying? Some mm-hmm. people who, who I helped needed that. They needed me at the time that I gave myself to them when I should have been selfish, but me being selfish is not me. So I'm not, I don't, I don't regret doing it. It's just, I, and you know, I just wish that like, you know, answering the question, if I could have done it mm-hmm. over, because we always see it after, you know, right. but, Hindsight. but, <laughs> Yeah, in hindsight, but um, maybe that was just those those troubles. Probably just wrote a couple of more chapters to the book. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Because I'm more. A lot of people expect me to just be boom all about this rap. But if they really knew me, rap is just something that I do. I'm way more than just a rapper. Right. It's just it's just one layer. Mm-hmm. Right. 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 Right, right. And it's like, of course, I love it. You know, I wish I could have uh, maximized my potential, but I don't believe God gave me this for for nothing. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I just got to continue riding it out. Yeah, yeah. Maybe maybe your role was to be that that match that lit the spark, Mm. you know? You know, and um, but boy, I would have, I'd have so rather be the spark, though. I know, I know. <laughs> it's not but too you late, know though. You know, yes, you know you you, you're not at the end of your book yet. You know, no, so no, it's not too no. late. Um, but I, I would like to talk about a little bit about what you had said about the selfishness. You know, a lot of us, we we are not selfish individuals. You know, especially of people like us that are giving, you know, and want to share and want to help and want to build people and see people grow, right? But what right. I've learned throughout the years is sometimes you have to be selfish, right? Selfish enough right. to protect your spirit, protect your vibe so that you can grow. Mm-hmm. And then once you surpass that level of growth, then you can start letting people back in. But sometimes right. if you're not selfish long enough, mm-hmm. you're never going to get to that level. Right. Right. You and know. it's good that you learn that lesson at whatever age you learned it because some of us learn things at 19 mm-hmm. and some of us learn it at 40. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It was like the way I was raised because where I slipped was I um wasn't out of my element, but I was out of my safe zone. You know what I'm saying? I was out of my um my familiar surroundings. You see, when I got with a different breed of people, and I, no disrespect, but Lafayette is nothing like Eunice, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And the people from Eunice, I felt like if I would have gave somebody from my neighborhood that shot or that opportunity that I gave other people that just disregarded and disrespected and just mishandled that opportunity, mm-hmm. they probably would have handled it better because they knew me. Right. But the people who I gave that shot to really didn't know me. They just seen the opportunity. Mm. And the reason why I went into it blindly was like, I thought that they would have valued what I was giving to them more than they did. Like, this is an opportunity. Right. I shouldn't have to watch you. I chose you to be one of my constituencies. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I, I sat you at my table. So at the, at the end of the day, my table really didn't mean nothing to them. They they just looked at it like, I'm going to use him as a stepping stone. And that, yeah. that, that, that hurts, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because when you genuinely give somebody a shot, but at the end of the day, what they can't take from me is that, you know, that question is going to come, who gave you that shot? Mm. Now, will you be real with yourself and say, boom, did it? Mm. Or are you going to add on to the lie? Mm. 
You, you, you sound like live. my husband, I swear. <laughs> oh, he you says that all the time. Yeah. And it infuriates me because, you know, he's so given and, you know, he's so knowledgeable and he's just free to share everything that he knows when it comes to this music business. We were just talking about that yeah, right before. Yeah, yeah. And a lot of times I'd be, want, I'd be like, babe, you got you got to stop. Like, this is working on me. Like, I'm mad. But he's like, I mean, you don't understand. This is who I am. And they know who I am. Mm-hmm. So right. that's all that matter. They know who I am. And I'm like, okay, that's you and your race. <laughs> yeah, God, it's, it's frustrating the, when you look, give a lot of yourself to what you believe in. I'm telling you, look, the petty yeah. person be wanting to come out of me, but thank God I killed that person a long time ago. But sometimes she be yeah. wanting to rise up, though. <laughs> hey, sometimes he might need you to rise up and ride with him. <laughs> yeah, because, you know. Because, because a lot of times um, the people who don't say nothing are just as guilty as the one who lies. Mm. You know yep. what I'm saying? Because you got to understand and you got to watch who you're around because the janitor at the building could tell a story too. They're going to believe him because he was there. Yep. He probably wasn't in none of the meetings, but he was in the building. And a lot of times if people want to believe something about you, oh, the janitor's word is gold. Mm-hmm. Even though he's just a janitor talking about the CEO. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, it, yeah man. I like it's, that analogy. I like that. Yes, yeah, it's a dirty game, man. I tell you, it takes a lot from me. I know. We in it. I know. (laughs) And this was part of the reason why we started this podcast. You know, um, I don't know if they had a chance to tell you, but we started the podcast because we wanted to be an extra leg of support in the community and build that bridge. I think that's a a great thing. You know, that's that's great what y'all are trying to do. We're not trying to do great what y'all are doing. Yeah, because, you know, not a lot of people, you know, have... uh, that opportunity to maybe get their music featured on the radio, you know, and then not a lot of startup businesses have that extra legal support and an outlet such as this to be able to put their name out there so people can go follow them and know who they are. Um, so that's why we did this podcast um, because it's, I have a background in business. We have a record label. We have a, a, a independent um, music production team. And so we just kind of want to just – be that leg of support for everybody that do what we do. Mm-hmm. That's great. That's great. So just to let you know, don't get discouraged because you got a oh, uh, you got a high hill to climb. Oh, we fell, I, trust me, I know. We fell, <laughs> we fell, we fell from glory because last year <laughs> he said we fell the, from glory. Yeah, it used to be the spot. You know, the we Mecca. made <laughs> we it, it was, and people took that for granted. But somewhere along the line, somebody sold their game to us and made us believe. Mm-hmm. We wasn't that and turned us from from the hustlers to customers, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So 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 with with you saying that, let me say this real let me put this in real quick. I think you spoke for a lot of artists when you said three three seven is a rapper's graveyard. You said yeah. normal love, dry soil. Yeah. We we wanna hear like what did you meant by that? Like what did you mean? <laughs> exactly what I said. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's um well compared to what it used to be for me to um for me to speak on it is like and, and I get a lot of this, you know, a lot of people shoot shots and I'ma get to that too. It's um Social media had a lot to do with it. Just keep that. Keep that in mind mm-hmm. when I come back to it. But I come from the era when it was really real. Like, you really had artists like myself, the Entourage, um, Wochi, Cupid. You had Crowley Red. You had Get Live Click. All of us was actually selling records and doing shows year-round. Mm-hmm. Year round, you know, and between 2010 and 2005, that social media hit real hard. And what it did, it was a great thing for for for, for promotion and branding. But with, like everything else that's good, you're gonna have that bad side and that bad element. And it was used as as a negative tool because. A lot of people had the power. I'm not going to say any names, but y'all know who they are. Right. You know, people had 100,000 followers, and they had, like, people just following whatever they post. As soon as they logged on, people was on their page wanting to see what's up. And these people are from Lafayette, Lake Charles, Opelousas, New Iberia, 
these little fine little broads who done linked up with somebody and got some followers or did something that went viral and had the opportunity to say, hey, I'm branding from my area, from the 337. This is what's popping around me. But instead, they go take pictures with Kevin Gates mm. or go dick ride Boosie or go follow level around and whatever, whatever, thinking that these people are going to put them on. Hmm. And those people never put them on. What you're supposed to do is water your own grass. You know what I'm saying? Yep. But it, it goes back to, stuff. you know what I think though, not to cut y'all boom, but I think it, I think maybe that was them being selfish, you know? Yeah, not, not being selfish. You ever seen that movie Revenge of the Nerds? Yes. I didn't, long time I ago. Didn't, the, I didn't the, ner it. the nerds had their day. Social mm -hmm. media gave them their day. We going to be the stars. Now there's a certain responsibility that you have when you're a real person, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, you heard what I just said? Yeah, a real person. Right. When, when you're a real person. Even from the dope game, even if you don't like this person and you see them starving, you're going to give them something to help feed themselves. Right? Okay. Yeah. Even if it's wrong, it's, it's ill what I'm giving you, but I'm giving it to you with the right intention. People did stuff with ill intentions, bro. And that was a lot of these guys who can't rap. And they the ones still having all the commentary about how the rap game's supposed to be, what you need to be, discount more than that. That's the dudes who can't rap and make a record. Hmm. But they are on social media using that platform to mislead the little ones that's coming up. And the little ones that came up from 2010 to now, they're, they're 25, 26 years old now. They were 14, 15 back then, you know what I'm saying? Right, so right. they were they were misled to believe that this is how they go. So the reason the, the area is dead, somebody with that influence from that time made the youngsters believe that nothing coming from here is worth nothing. Mm -hmm. That I is agree. all about... I see it rules. and I hear it. I hear it. Yeah. And I see that's why, like I said, we started this platform because people that's in our generations, our mid-30s on up, you know, we understand what real music is. We understand what it is to go see a viable show. You know, we understand mm -hmm. what bars is mm -hmm. and lyrical content, right? So right. that's what the city is missing. Man, the city got it. You know, I'm going to be honest with you. Last yet, in this area, the 337 got some of the hardest rappers in I the world. I know, I know. It's so much talent. But when I say what the city is missing, I'm saying they're missing the platform. Right. So that's what? that's why we bring in this platform and not just that we create in other avenues and other platforms for those type of artists. Well, guys, we're going to go ahead and take a quick break. If you like what we're doing and want to be a part of our movement and support the show, please go to one sound one scene. com. Click on the episode under the player. There are icons. Be sure to hit the heart icon to the far right. Or go directly to patreon.com forward slash one sound one scene. There you'll get exclusive info on what is offered to our aspire, inspire, and pour into other supporters and how your support will benefit what we do. We appreciate you and thank you for every level of support. Guys, be sure to tune in to part two of this episode, guys, with Big Boom. It's been super fun. Thanks so much for hanging out with us. Closing us out is a song from Highlight titled Miss Me With It. You can find her on Instagram at official underscore highlight. And be sure to look for her music on all online platforms. Always remember, if you help enough people get what they want, you will always get what you want. Aspire, inspire, and pour into others. Until next time, folks. One song, one scene, we are out. Miss me with that bush. 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 Make it guns, got that track, guns, stupid guns. You be with that sneak this.